Hi, today we're going to be working on kata hand godan. Hand godan is the last of the hands and it's the capstone. It builds on what you've learned in each of the other hands and then extends it. So in hand godan, we're going to pick up a new kick, Mikazuki Gary, as well as it's the first and only jump in any of the hand katas. Additionally, there's some very challenging shifting of the body weight in both the beginning and end of the kata, so we'll study those. We don't have a whole lot of room, so I'll work through the kata once so that you can get feel for the moves. The general assumption is you've seen these moves, you've learned the kata, the embassy, and techniques, so now we'll try to take that to the next level. So we'll do the kata once, all the way through, focus on the individual groups of moves, and give some specific lessons, and then go through the kata again at the end. Pay particular attention to the count of the kata the first time we do it through, so that you're aware of what moves correspond to what counts in the kata. There are 23 moves in the kata, the eyes will move 12 and move 19. Here I go down. Each. So it'll work to stay in frame while we break the kata down. The first six moves, three on the left and then three on the right, repeat. And it's a series of two rapid, fast moves, followed by a slow transition into a kamai. So from yoi, drop down, weight straight down into a back stance. As you do that, make vibration and add inside to outside middle block. Followed rapidly by a punch here. Make sure you're maintaining your kokutsudachi. Don't let the back knee float forward. Like in hand knee down. Imagine like somebody's pressing their hand and you're pressing your knee out that way. The rhythm of these two moves is very fast. Followed by three. Slow transition into flowy kamai. Feet are together, haizokudachi, knees together. This hand comes around, but stays close to the body. Not away from the body, you lose body connection that way. Moves four through six are the same thing repeated. Then we go into Murote Uke. So this block, supported block, we see in many katas, when you make this move, you don't have a lot of room to make the technique, so the elbow comes just across the center line. And then once it's there, you move into the block. So this hand makes an inside to outside middle block. This hand supports it with those, with that fist right on your elbow. And followed immediately by shifting in and downward block. So the downward X block, hands are vertical, the right hand is on top. So from here, comes in, the hands come together, and then the hip drives them forward. Soften the elbows and drive up. Okay. Take care not to raise the arms straight and don't stand up. So from here, elbows bend, hands open and come up. Your arms don't block your vision and are about where they would be for a rising block here. Keeping your wrists touched, in touch and contact, open your hands to a V, press down. So this is a palm to palm block and it's out a little way from your body, so it's not up close but not really farther than a fist away from your body. So not out here. So whole series here, here. Remember, make a V and then press down. When you do them all together, it looks like a complex move, but it's simple once you break it down. The next count, move 11, is in place. So body vibration 
and Zuki. Step forward now, Kiai, move 12. Ha! And the kata execute that entire series continuously, so there are no pauses. I broke it up just so you could see. So for the kata, make it look about this speed. Yeah, you turn around. Anytime you turn in a kata, make sure your move is sharp and quick. There's an opponent advancing behind you. So from the ki point, staying in frame now, I want to turn my nose and my navel at the same time. Right? So if we're here, this way. That helps to get your eyes around and open the hip up. It makes this turn a lot faster. Ready? So here, turn, elbows, elbows, knee and you make a down block. So one more time, you're covering with this hand across the face, elbow, elbow, knee comes as you make the turn. And step into kibidach. So the move is done in the kata after kiai. Then eyes turn, kakeuki, hook block. This hand, draw hand on top, this hand goes out. As this hand turns over, these two hands finish their trajectory at the same, last, same second. This hand is palm down until the very end. Good. Now we have the, the kick. Mikazuki Gary, crescent kick. The first time you learn it, I want you to think about keeping your knee up high and having the foot follow the correct crescent trajectory. So it's not this. The foot comes around, but the knee has to come up to make the contact. So the foot strikes this way. Okay. So from here, first time you learn it, pivot your feet. That'll help you to concentrate on getting the knee up. And the knee comes up and around. After you practice that for a while, make it one motion to where the foot comes around and hits. When you do the move, be aware of this back arm. Keep it tight against your body because the next count is an elbow strike. So, one count here. After this hook block, a little bit of tension in your armpit, soft elbow. So, my elbow's not locked here. Comes out about chew down height. Make your kick, and then the next count immediately is an elbow strike. So doing it from this way, here, last second, foot, elbow hit at the same time. Fingers are extended, you strike the palm of the hand, you make this shape. So it's kind of like a box, and this hand is in your, at your chest. Try to make your elbow as pointed as possible for the striking surface to make contact. Okay? One more time. In katas after this, those two moves are done with one count. So learn them, learn them well here in hand good on, but be ready to do them as one count. That forces you to focus on the arm holding it back. And then from here, shift your body weight into kosadach and another morote, another support block. So making sure I'm in frame here. Here. The next opponent comes from this direction. So eyes and your body shifts this way. Hips stay natural, support block. I picture somebody rushing in, maybe at a tackle or something from the side. So you meet them, shift your weight here. Squeeze your legs here. Then the very next move, you push into this right foot. That drives this hand up, it's an uppercut. So from here, the left foot steps out into Renoji Dachi. You're standing, it's essentially a, a, a formal a tension stance, so it's not a fundamental stance. You're up higher than you would be. This hand strikes out. In the past, we struck for the ceiling, that's changed. So you will see some people do this. Either one is okay for now, but learn to do that moving out, especially for tournaments and testing purposes. Following this, we've got the jump. To make the jump properly, you have to load up your support leg. Your left leg is the one that's gonna launch you. So you've gotta move your weight on to it off your right leg. So right here, if 
about 90% of my weight's on this right foot. The left foot doesn't have much on it. When I jump, 100% is gonna be on the left foot. So you shift your weight as you do, this right foot and hip turn, trying to get the right knee up. The right knee gives you lift. For this jump, you want height, not distance. So think knee up. So again, here, this way. Now I'm ready to jump, and at the same time, launch this knee up and land. When you make the jump, you want to think about pulling your feet up underneath you and then cross them and land in Cosa Dutch. So one more time, just the feet. Shift the weight. Now as the hip comes through, yep. the hands come from this position to here at the peak of your jump, and this and the ki at the very end. Right? So the hands, with the hands now, here, Swing the hands and hips. Yeah! When you make the move, let me do it from this way. Keep your head up straight. Don't lean forward. So you're not going to be perfectly straight. You don't be falling backwards, but you don't want to fall too far forward either. So keep your head and body inside the small square made by your feet. Squeeze your feet. Right now, all my weight's on my right foot, about 10% on my left foot. That has to change for the next move. The next move is coming from the side. I drive into my left foot, so I have to transition my weight to my left foot, and then drive and make Moroto in a very narrow front stance. So again, keeping in frame here, here. Eyes, transition weight to the left foot, Narrow front stance, right there, okay, to the right. Okay, let's move 20. The final three moves have got a lot to do with complex shifting of your weight. So pay special attention to where your body weight is and what stance you're in. From right there, okay, the next opponent comes from behind you. As he or she comes to attack, you pick it up, again, nose and navel, turning the same time, cover, and this hand comes up. That's part A. Part B is you crank the hips. This hand comes around in Shuto, and this hand makes Nagashiyuki flowing block. So here, A, B, C. Okay, so you go from front stance this direction, go front stance this direction, go back stance this direction. So your body weight has to flow this way, then this way, then back. That's what we look for in testing and tournaments. So make sure you're demonstrating that. That's all one count. Move 21. Move 22, you push into the right leg and stand up. This arm form is called manji form, manji uki, okay? Kind of looks a little like a swastika. This hand, is doing an inside outside block. This hand doing a down block. Right? So move 22. You maintain the form and only your feet move. You then pivot. The way you pivot, drop your weight down and turn your left foot and knee forward. As that happens now, you've got tension here. You're going to close. As you close, step out and make the same technique going the other direction. Shuto here, Nagashiyuki here. Then pull back. Okay. So doing it from the other side so you catch it this way. 21, 22, 23. That's the last move, the kata. For those last three moves, pay particular attention to the breakdown. Work on them individually, part A, part B, part C, but then learn how to put them all together. That count is important, and it's there for a reason. So if you pause at the wrong place, the techniques don't work. I'm now going to complete the whole kata one more time so that you can kind of see the rhythm and hopefully pick up on the points we talked about in class. I'll do it this time facing the camera, so the angle might be a little bit different, 
but pay particular attention to the rhythm. Okay, I'm good. That's hand go down. I hope you enjoyed the class. Keep training.